Park. Photojournalist Dustin Scholl and myself went around the northwest suburbs earlier in the week and discovered there are many random acts of kindness that people are displaying. I think it's cute. I think it's really cool that they're doing it. I'm seeing it all over Facebook. And I think that just brings joy to so many people. Oh, I like it, yeah. It gives them something to do, too. That just brings joy to so many people that it's it's giving us hope. Yeah. It is definitely giving us hope, and that's what we all need. We're all in this together. There's nothing separated. It's just everyone sticking out for everyone else. It pushes people to strive and be better and, you know, be more kind to others because you never know what people could be going through, especially with this whole epidemic and the virus. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt, too, for like people who are out. <laughs> We decided to put the signs out based on a friend of ours that we're making them for, specifically like seniors in high school and the, the families that had some hard times. you got to have some hope. There, we did that for the, for the mail carrier. <laughs> the bikers and the walkers had a great response to it. They'd give us a, an attaboy or a thumbs up when they were walking by. It was nice to see. As Minnesota, we are a whole. It brings an extra boost that somebody might need. Somebody could have lost somebody or somebody could be going through something right now and you never really know and I think the messages with the chalk on the floor and the things in the windows and it brings an extra boost that somebody might need. doing is I am setting up easels on my front lawn and posting a lot of my art that I make so that people can drive by to see sort of an outdoor museum and they can enjoy it from their cars so we're keeping safe distance and all that in mind. So the art that I'll be posting is primarily my watercolors but I'm also a calligrapher. Um, I can show you some of the pieces. Um, I have these are just um, art prints but um, I don't know if you can see that. This is called Shine On. And then I have pieces like this. These are going to be displayed. They'll be 16 inches by 24 inches. So they'll be very large so you can see them from the street. Well, I was thinking about how, you know, we're going through hard times. And um, people really can't get out into public spaces. And museums are a source of great joy and relief. Um, they're really for our souls. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just make a museum outside. Well, this one's called Sweetened with Love. So you can see I have a lot of dreamy kind of whimsical pieces, but I also have, well, this is also dreamy and whimsical. I do a lot of, um, animals and birds and things like that. I'm happy to, you know, provide this experience for people to come by and take a look. So let's start, let's put you guys up on the steps. Okay. I've been photographing uh, local families in my town, Beth Page. This is a time since everybody's on stay-at-home orders that kids are home. I know having my own kids that it, in general it's hard to get all of my children at home who has sports, who's at school, who lives away. So now everybody's stuck at home so it's been great to be able to get a family portrait. Um, I come by, I stay minimum 10 feet away from the families, often a lot further, take their photo and uh, then I, you know, gift it to them. And, you know, it's just a way that I can give back to my community um, because I, I don't have the funds to, you know, fundraise a million dollars and stuff like that. But to be able to meet new people has been fabulous and uh, <laughs> see them smiling is great. Flooded with calls of kindness. Good Samaritans are ordering pizza for families in need and it's happened more than once. This is the Winter Garden Pizza Company, a business like many others, hit hard by the economic downturn caused by the coronavirus. But this is a bigger story than just how many slices are flying out of the ovens here. This is about some customers who came in just before the pandemic. They ate and left, but after hearing about the theme parks and 
major business shutdowns here in Central Florida, they contacted the owner of the shop to do something special. They said, here's $100, uh, please feed somebody in your community that just lost, your, lost their job. A generous offer. Stephen Facilla and his bare bone staff went to work creating a special package that would make a difference in the community during these tough times. Feeds five people, glass of wine, full tray lasagna, or big ziti and meatballs. Um, you know, our famous garlic knots. Stephen wanted to see what would happen if he took the offer to social media. The other day we put up our Easter special and we heard back from this same couple from Seattle and they said we'd like to buy five of these Easter meals for someone in your community. Then 16 more meals were generously purchased for families in need. Calls coming in from all over. North Carolina, Titusville, here in town, in Winter Garden, Orlando, people just either calling or going on Facebook and saying, I'd like to buy a meal for somebody that doesn't have a paycheck right now. Stephen saying he's glad to see the offer is taking off and he's a little shocked at how a simple act of kindness got it all started. What's nice is that somebody who came to our community as a tourist is thinking about us. And that's kind of how we all should be thinking about each other during this time. I love that story, oh, David. And life is very busy right now for Lillian Argetta. She has been sewing almost nonstop since last week. She wants to make as many masks as she can. We are in quarantine, she says in Spanish, but they can't rest. Argetta is talking about farm workers. Even though they are considered low-skilled workers, their labor is essential. We must take care of the health of those in our community, she says. Farm workers face an increased risk from the coronavirus. Working in dusty fields and around pesticides puts them at increased risk for respiratory problems like asthma and bronchitis. But a third of them are uninsured. More than half are undocumented, so they are not getting any relief from the CARES Act. That's where people like Argetta stepped up. They were recruited last week by Alas in Half Moon Bay to make masks, hundreds of them. We actually hear the families really wanting masks, the individuals really wanting masks, the workers wanting masks, but there's nowhere to find them. In a week, 10 women volunteers were able to make and give away 500 masks. The masks are being handed out to farm workers along the San Mateo coast. Everybody's very glad they're receiving the mask. The masks aren't just for working in the fields. Many farm workers live in houses that resemble barracks. So the close quarters they have a common area, uh, the kitchen, uh, the living room, the bathrooms are common areas. So they have uh, access to a mask if they need it. California and other areas are really taking note of how important it is to protect the very people that feed us, that care for us, that are working on the front lines to get us food and supplies. This KCTV 5's Nathan is. Vickers has more on a convenience store where your dollar goes a little bit farther than usual today. If the line of cars doesn't tip you off. It's a big line. It's a big line. In the digital age. I just ended up seeing that on, on Facebook. Word travels fast about a deal. 99 cent gas. Worth the wait. Wasn't too, too bad though. I waited in line longer for hand sanitizer than that. The Grand Slam convenience store dropped their price at the pump to less than a dollar today as a way of saying thank you to essential workers. For me, it was just like essential daycare workers. So, you know, taking the hour cut, it was helpful to be able to get a break on some gas. Oh my God provided. Really appreciate it. I know everybody appreciates them doing this. Just about everyone needs a break right now. And even if it's just a buck, it adds up. It goes a long way, especially right now. It's not a lot of jobs. Everybody's losing jobs. Joshua Cortez is a postal carrier. It goes a long way. John Dunn is filling up his church's outreach van. Instead of it being a hard time, it can be a good time. The store says the bargain goes until midnight, whether you're filling it up or just topping it off. It feels amazing, like just to be recognized, just to not be like looked over. These days, a deal isn't just about the cash. It's okay to give your neighbor a break and help out wherever you can. I mean, we all need it right now. For many, it's fuel for the soul, too. People who have recovered from COVID-19 could have a life-saving ingredient flowing in their blood to help others who are fighting for their lives. It has been very, very, very promising. Dr. Tim Peterson is medical director with the Blood Center. He says three patients in Louisiana are now being treated with convalescent plasma therapy. It's an investigational treatment approved by the FDA. It allows someone who has recovered from a COVID-19 infection to donate their plasma that could have antibodies to help critical patients fight the virus. The antibodies present in the plasma when given to a patient who is very critical could actually be infused, travel around the patient who received them and go in and 
take a beating to the virus and hopefully knock it out. The first Louisiana patient received plasma from a donor over a week ago in Shreveport. And they were extremely critical. It was an emergency collection and they infused to the patient. And the last word I had out of yesterday, the patient was stable and improving. He says this weekend, two other critical patients at East Jefferson General Hospital received plasma from another donor. The word I got today is uh, one patient is off the ventilator and doing much, much better. The second patient is removed from the ventilator and now is just getting nasal prong oxygen. So both of them have significantly improved. Is it coincidental? Possibly. Possibly the patients could have improved on their own, but it's very, very promising results in all three situations. This treatment is not yet proven to be effective, but for now, the signs are positive and the research continues. Erica Ferrando. Quarantine with COVID-19, plans to donate his plasma to try and help others. His family is also sharing an update tonight with our Jenny Runovich about how the coronavirus affected his health and why social distancing is so important. <laughs> Staying at home feels like freedom for the Steffens family. Just weeks ago, isolation was their agonizing reality. Going down into the window well so that they can talk to their daddy. Separated by the coronavirus. Say daddy. Daddy. With dad confined to the basement, a cough, fever, tightness in his chest brought a man who ran Spartan races to a standstill. And it breaks my heart because they miss Sean so much. <laughs> Sean was cleared from quarantine April 1st, rejoined his family, but that night he got a fever again. I know, I just had to give you a super duper hug. And my first thought at that moment is, oh my God, I still have this. And it was like a roller coaster after that. You, you, you keep thinking that you're healed and you're getting better, then boom, and that knocks you back down again. What's worse, his boys, one of whom has asthma, developed fevers too. Sean says he had to fight for testing. Children under 13 are not allowed to get tested, but his came back positive, his wife all clear. Sean finally recovered Thursday after 21 days in quarantine. The kids doing okay too. It's, it's just so much different. I mean, it's better. It's just, you just appreciate everything. He kept a journal, shared the experience on Facebook to warn about the virus's danger and the urgent need for social distancing. Protect yourself. Get a mask where don't work. Demand sanitary wipes for, for cash and, and credit card exchanges. Now the Steffens are helping others, making masks to raise money for a food pantry, $1,000 so far, and he plans to donate plasma. While antibody testing isn't a sure thing, Sean is hoping for a COVID-19 cure. It would take all the pressure off this accelerated like frenzy to find a vaccine because we are the vaccine. We can directly help the ones who need it the most. Now, we just got an update from Sean about his boy's health. Their doctor had the family take them to a respiratory center as a precaution. They're getting tested right now. Doctors say it is highly likely they have COVID-19.